being close up to the screen tonight. Jesus. Hey, buddy. Bear with me a second here, Chief. There you go. You are unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. How the fuck did you get a haircut, bitch? <laughs> uh, I cut it this morning. I'm slicked, man. I, I'm like going nuts right uh, now. Don't, don't look at the back where I can't see my head. Dude, I was literally about to throw a two around my sides, man. Don't even laugh. I was. You remember the old flat topper combs? That's oh, what I used. I love those, man. I was. I used to crank those things out one after another, man. The perfect number two all the way around. Oh, shit, I saw. I saw some skin back there, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I faded. I faded the sides on my own. Don't don't look to your right for your notes. <laughs> <laughs> I went back to the marine cut, I guess, right? So that's a little low and tight. <laughs> I was start I was starting to look like a sterno bum laying on the corner. So <laughs> oh my shit's so freaking wide right now on the side, it's not even funny, man. I had already let it go too far before this happened. I'm two <laughs> months I'm two months overdue before a month and a half ago when this craziness started. <laughs> yeah, I got crazy. I shaved it, shaved the goatee off almost, just left some stub stubble. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking about, so that's Carrie just responding. I sent her Andrew's email. Cool. Yeah, she, she just hit me up and said, I want to be, I want to be a part of the, um, da, 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 what'd she say to me? Hey, love, I would love to participate as an educator in the reset course. How can I get to be part? And I told her to contact you. She said, can you hook me up with him or put me or put my name in for him to contact. I do not know him. Pretty please with sugar on top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so just have her uh, talk to Andrew. Andrew will get her on the schedule. It's Are you, are you familiar, done. Are you familiar I mean, with her? I, I am not, um, but I, I hold on one second. I just setting something up here on screen. No, um, just so you know, um, a couple states came out today and said they're closed till June 15th. Yeah, which is just going to be, you know, we've got to get some news across tonight to the people who have not applied for loans and things like that to really um, get their head out of their butt and look at this as a long term thing, not a short term thing. So um, I, I've, I know I have a lot of people that have been procrastinating, thinking this is a couple weeks thing. And uh, it's not. It's not now. So, yeah, um, but we're just waiting for James. James is going to do all kind of the, the recording and mediating and watching the comments and all that he should be back he's going to get some water for his scotch so <laughs> yeah he and i talked this afternoon this morning a little bit cool cool i asked him what i was going to experience on the screen because when i was watching last night you know i had all the comments and he said yeah you're going to have all those comments i said shit i'm not going to be looking at that page man they were flying no around. no that's what him and i will be doing the comments then angela and um I'm trying to think who else is going to be looking over the Facebook Live comments. I, I think Mary said she's going to jump into Facebook Live comments too and help out with that. So yeah, cool. she just sent them. So, yeah, um, that's, the kind of, that's kind of the format. That's why I went over to this other Zoom platform. This isn't the normal one. This is the webinar one yeah. um, because the attendees can hear us, but unless they raise their hand, they can't speak. Um, it's just too difficult to play the muting game. Big time. So. Good for you. So my presentation, again, I'm obviously used to being in front of hundreds of people and it's very interactive. Um, That's you know, I'll be asking some questions. They'll be answering them. I'm sure there'll be a little bit of delay. It's semi rhetorical, but if they get, if they start playing, then I'll, you know, I could definitely play with them. D Dina says, yeah, yeah. hi guys, I'm early. Is that okay? Dina oh, Piazza. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, Dina. Um, you ju you just get to see the comics before the show. <laughs> Dean, Dean is one of my peeps. Is she? She's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I saw her. She she posted a picture with her 80s hair the other day. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, I have some of those around somewhere. Yeah, me too. I, you don't want to see the perfect mullet I had. <laughs> oh, dude, I got, I got some right here. Where'd it go? Oh. I'm like, they've been around all freaking day. Oh, 
Of course, they all just hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> the, the attendees are not on camera, only the panelists, so don't worry about it. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh, here's a side profile one. Oh, that's um, funny. The that is, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that is definitely that is definitely eighties, dude. When that was wet, late, late, that's late eighties. That's late eighties, early nineties. This was eighty six. Okay. I was six months out of cosmetology school, and I took first runner up out of the fifty top salons in San Diego in a ten week or fifteen week competition called Hair Wars. You, you, you were th you were th for Miami Vice, right? <laughs> oh my God! Look at this. <laughs> look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's bad. oh, there's oh, other people. Time, no. There's other people that can see this right now, huh? I like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this. Do you live in an air, in the airplane? <laughs> that's just my fake background, guys. So, um, yeah. So Are I wish I lived in the airplane. Facebook comments. What's that? You're watching the Facebook comments? No, no, it's not live yet on Facebook. Oh. I can fire it up. People will get a kick out of this. Let me fire it up. Oh, hell no. I'm not showing myself no more. Uh, yeah, I am. You're, you're going to get it now, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Yo, I'm about to get on. I'm going to make, sure sure make sure it's running anyway, the Facebook Live. So. Thank you, brother. God, Steve's getting on a harebrained call right now. <laughs> <laughs> there is education everywhere. Who's, who's Stratlin? Steve Stratlin? Yes, Steve Gomez. Oh, oh, Gomez. Okay. Oh, here's another one when I was making sombreros out of hair. <laughs> I can't hold on. I'm watching the I'm watching the Facebook Live. I can't see oh, you right now. Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> Should be on live. Oh God. Uh, let's see. The emails are starting up. The 10 minute notice. So they're gonna be going for a little bit. What do you mean you're in but not on video, Alba? The heck is that all about? James, come on. Okay, we should be live in Facebook. Let's take a look. Let me reset this. And we are live in Ooh. Facebook. Okay. Oh, goodness. You're right. Boy, I turned my head. I did scalp myself. <laughs> <laughs> and now everybody knows on Facebook land. <laughs> All right. I'll I'll rewind the video to your mullet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Let's see what we got here. Get rid of a couple of these tabs. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Bear with me, Oscar. I'm just setting up a couple last minute things here. Do what you so, gotta do, brother. Yeah, yeah. The way we'll do this is like like kind of format last night, right? I'll introduce you. Um, you'll uh, jump into your or wherever you want. You just uh, I'll see when you pause asking questions, and I'll open it up to uh, the people online. And uh, so you'll be proposing the questions to me, not James, correct? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be doing that. He's taking care of all the technical stuff with Facebook and okay. recording. Roger all that. that other stuff. I do not see him in here. Why is he not on? <coughs> supposed to be a panelist. So I don't think he has the controls unless he's a panelist. James, jump on as a panelist if you can hear me. This way you have the side controls. Hold on. Hold on, Oscar. No problem. I'm in, but 
not on video. I'm texting you. This, the text messaging system was the worst invention ever invented. <laughs> you can't tell what the hell people are talking about. There's no inflection, right? Dude, uh, I'm 55 and single. That might tell you what texting has done to my life. <laughs> oh, shit. I guess I'm 56 as of, as of a couple weeks ago. <laughs> he wants to know if he has the right link. You should have You've gotten an email prior to this, James, from Zoom telling you to be a panelist. So let me, if you're in a group, he's probably an attendee. I can promote him to a panelist. So let me see how to figure out how to do this high tech stuff here. Is it a completely interface, different interface than the, the other Zoom platforms? It is, yeah. Oh, wow. She's got Kind of annoying, but learning curve. Exactly. Well, you made me a panelist last night when I couldn't get on. Yeah, I mean, you can you can write you can click on people and make them panelists, but I don't even see him in here. Um, no, he might not even be in there. He's not even in Zoom. He must he's be on Facebook Live. He's James, up. you must be on Facebook Live only, not in Zoom. He's pouring another scotch. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I told them to get in here early. <laughs> How many are on he says, Facebook right now? He says he's in Zoom in both, yet I don't see him. That's weird. Huh. But whatever. Um, I'll make it happen here. If you can get in as a panelist, James, I would back out and re-enter as a panelist. Andrew should be in here also in a minute. So the panelists will be myself, James, and Andrew, provided Andrew and James make it in here. They had the link. I mean, you got the link, right? It came through in the email this time? Last night. It, never, it didn't work last night, but it worked tonight. Yeah, I, I, oh, there, he, there he is. He's, he's under, hold on. I see him. He's under, not under himself. <laughs> you got to know his AKAs too. <laughs> yeah, info at the salon movement. So promote to a panelist. There you go. I just uh, bumped you up. There you are, James. Don't have your video on, but I bumped you up to a panelist. What up, James? You're muted. I am All right, muted. I'm good, man. Finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You came in as an attendee instead of a panelist, but it's fine. There, there you go. Is. Peace. <laughs> you, re you ready to go, man? You ready to go? Let's do this. I was going to throw a sport coat on, but this is Georgia, and it was like 85 today, man. <laughs> oh, you're so lucky. It's been nothing but rain and miserable here. Oh, so. it's, we're, we're getting it tomorrow. It's going to be ugly, supposedly, all day long. Although I hear the high heat kills off the coronavirus, so that's a good thing. Oh, shit. <laughs> now, that's, why there's, that's why a lot of states are saying that they're going to be closed till the middle of June, because they expect it to die down when it gets hot. We'll see. Um, and then, then they're saying it's going to spark back up when it gets cold again, which hopefully uh, they get, you know, some kind of vaccine or something. Soon, so. Yeah, it's. Um... <laughs> I better, I better change my background. Everybody thinks I live on an airplane. <laughs> go, uh, go to the desert where where Andrew goes. <laughs> hey, oh God, no! His hair stick. Andrew's hair sticks to the sand, right? <laughs> You're social distancing from 30,000 feet, brother. <laughs> That's exactly it. That's playing it safe. I want to get off that plane. I'm trying to figure out how to change it on here. All the controls are different on here. Which I'm not really happy about. So, James. Oh, well. Is this that what it is. On or is that graffiti on a wall in your house? Well, when you're homeschooling for like three weeks, this is what my house looks like in the entire house. It's almost like a, <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like a, it's like Thank a crack house. Back. Yeah, it's like a crack house from like the 80s, man. My, there's like crayons all over the wall. There's like glass bottles broken. It sounds like a squatter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. It's so appropriate for my walls. <laughs> yeah, Oscar, you got to get a background, especially for your bricks. 
So I was uh, my to a couple of my best friends in San Diego. We did a we did a little cocktail hour yesterday, three o'clock here, twelve o'clock there, in San Diego, and we did a Zoom. And one of my buddies, he's on the, the package I think that I'm on with Zoom, and he said I could change my backgrounds on that package, and I didn't realize that. You can, oh yeah, on the on the basic package. Yeah. What you should do is create a picture background of your bricks. You can upload any picture you want as a custom background. That's like the cool. airplane? Okay. I just went online on Google and found an airplane background, right? <laughs> that's awesome, Kayla. So, uh, and that's, I, I saw that's this in the settings, right? That's in the settings? I saw this guy doing a real estate Zoom, and I'm like, holy shit, that dude's got his own plane? <laughs> you do and he laughed at me. because he goes, no, it's just a background. <laughs> you do look like an infomercial in the plane, just an FYI. <laughs> But, but I was thinking, man, that, that could, I, I was thinking, man, I give him some props. That, that gives credibility, right? It's like yeah. the dude's taking a picture next to somebody else's Porsche. <laughs> I'm telling you. I like Andrew's yeah. green background. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> What's up, buddy? He's mute. You're muted. You're muted. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's shutting me up. <laughs> hey, James, you were fantastic last night. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate yeah. that. Really, really, really awesome. And uh, so here we have the cleanup hitter. <laughs> <laughs> I had to call James this morning because I was so nervous. I'm like, how do I follow that stuff up? <laughs> nah, you're going to do fantastic, man. I like the bricks, though. I think uh, it, it's you. looking good. I, um, I'm not used to speaking to just a screen of myself. That's going to be fun. <laughs> right? Well, <laughs> We're going to be a here. Obviously, you'll be the main panelist. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm fine with it. I, it's, I do that every day, uh, too. Yeah, yeah. So if you need hey, to Gary, share you. Did you get a haircut? <laughs> Self-inflicted. <Yeah. laughs> I, I, cut, I cut all of them, Andrew. Can't you it tell? Looked, I, I, yeah. What, what, what's with the Jesus? That's me. They, they, call it, they, they call that a barracks cut, right? That's like oh, cut boy. Boy. Oh, I, call, I call it mange, but you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> that's right. In, in a in a week, it'll it'll be growing back in. So oh, that's what I used to tell my clients. You'll love it in a couple of weeks. <laughs> exactly. exactly. That's why you're doing this. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let me let, let me turn my head. Wait, wait a minute, man. Boldness. There you go. Oh, you're gonna show it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't care. <laughs> Andrew, there was a time I used to rock some hair in the 80s. Oh, my God. And I was rocking the mullet, baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one on the right modeling. Ah, that's right. that's yeah, what I thought. <laughs> oh, my God. That was funny. But I can, I can do some hair, believe it or not. I actually knew what to do with it, man. <laughs> Jesus. That was six months out of cosmetology school competing in a – a, a competition called Hair Wars in San Diego with like the top 50 salons and I took first runner up to Karen Angel. <laughs> wow. wow. Looks like uh, you apprenticed with Robert Lobata. That guy's a genius actually. Oh yeah, I was, I was, I've been around for as long as those guys, just behind them. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so we, we normally get st started at 8.05 Oscar, just so you know, just because I, I see the attendees starting at, you know, Click, click, click. So yeah, so let's wait for you know the crowd to get on here, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. We should shut ourselves. James, up. you and Angela are going to be doing the Facebook, or? Yep, I have her on. Christine Zelinsky's gone too. Um, maybe Stephen cool. Gomez will be kind enough to answer a few cool. questions for us too while he's. He's on a harebrained call right now. He was just he just texted me to say good luck. Yeah, Mary, Mary Wilson's on too. Hey, Mary. Um, she said she's going to jump in and help to welcome some people and answer some questions. So you got you got a lot of coverage tonight, my friend. <laughs> Thanks, Melody. She said that pic's fantastic. <laughs> um, let's see. So we got, let's see, uh, comment. Hey, Oscar. Hey, Oscar. Uh, I thought there was a meeting. Did I enter the wrong code? Whoever said that from their Galaxy S10? No, you got, you got the right code. You're in here. Uh, is Beth Minardi speaking? No, tonight is Oscar Valencia speaking. Beth is on the schedule. You can check all the schedules inside of the Salon Business Reset website or the Beauty Business Reset website. Um, and uh, all the panelists' uh, schedules will be in there. But you should watch every lesson. Um, they're all going to be valuable. 
Are we sure that Galaxy S10 is not Beth Minardi? <laughs> could, right? With, with the way Beth and technology, it could be. <laughs> uh, no, Beth, you're not on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know we all love you Beth but <laughs> yeah from Galaxy you will never know there you go there you go oh my god that has to be her no hey Beth, we, we think it's you we, we, we love you Beth, Beth on an android I don't think so <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no way. <laughs> She's definitely an Apple girl. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the meeting's going to start in two minutes. Countdown's here. Got 74 on Zoom and uh, another 50 something in live right now. So hopefully we'll uh, get a few more people in here once we all get going. James, you're all set on your side? Yeah, I'm all good to go. Everything's up. Hey, Oscar, you know, at the top of that Zoom screen, if you don't want to just look at yourself, you can change the view so you'll see the four of us on there if it makes you, you know, whatever makes you more comfortable. <laughs> I'll be fine. Thanks, brother. <laughs> hey, man, I just feel, I, I feel like, I don't know, I was so worried about my gray. I think I'm grayer than you in here, man. What's going on? I should have shaved the sides a little bit. Oh, like, I, you, if you, you got gray, this is platinum, brother. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> my sister used to say, it's not gray, it's taupe. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, we're all, we're all really lucky because Beth Minardi is going to be about dying gray hair at home with uh, using her Beth Minardi signature demi-permanent hair color. Awesome. That's somebody from, and I apologize, M.O., I'm going to say that's uh, Montana, yes, or Missouri, I'm not Missouri's sure. Missouri's M.O. <laughs> Is it? Okay. <laughs> I'm a Jersey guy, you know, <laughs> get all those abbreviations, they're tough. <laughs> I had to look up the one for Oregon. <laughs> that's how bad it is. <laughs> So the, the comment I got back from the the unknown galaxy, I think maybe you guys are wrong about Beth and an Apple phone. I think that might be Beth. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see that. It might be. That, that would be funny though. <laughs> yeah, she sent me she sent me the fist emoji, but there were the middle finger was up on it. So I, I guess that must have been it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that definitely Beth. <laughs> One minute, and we will get started. Are you ready, Oscar? Yes, sir. Okay, you will sit on your side. Okay, so we're going to kick this off now. Everybody ready? Let me turn the recording on. Recording's on. Okay, welcome everybody to tonight's uh, lesson. Tonight's lesson is going to be with Oscar Valencia from Breaking Down Your Walls. Um, Oscar is a good friend of mine, known him quite a while, great educator. <laughs> We're really going to enjoy his lesson tonight. Um, on as panelists, we have James Albo, who's helping out with the technology, my partner Andrew Finkelstein, and obviously Oscar Valencia, the speaker. And with that, um, again, welcome everybody to the Beauty Business Reset. Oscar, it's all yours. All right, brother, then thanks so much. And welcome everybody to, God, a new norm. And let's hope this doesn't continue to be the norm, but there's some serious adjustment periods going on for everybody right now. And I feel you, I'm with you. We're all about this in the industry. We have some of the greatest educators and trainers and coaches and business owners and gurus coming to you every night for anywhere from I think 15 to 30 nights. Derek seems to have an abundance of speakers available right now. And we're all donating our time and our experience to support anything and everything we can to get you guys through this. We have people talking with the SBA loans. Um, James kicked it off last night and killed it, knocked it out of the park. And I do coaching and consulting like many of the people that would be on this call. And instead of diving into numbers and, and best practices and so many of that stuff, I thought here in the early stages um, of the call series, 
that I would try to interrupt our thoughts and our beliefs. So um, I want to acknowledge Derek and James and Andrew for putting this together. And more importantly, for all of you who are seeking education and seeking answers. And just know this, take a deep breath, lots of them throughout the day, and we will get through this. I'm Oscar Valencia Jr. I'm founder and creator of Breaking Down Your Walls, like Derek said, and The Bricks. Um, I've been a stylist for about 34 years. I'm a second generation stylist. Three out of four kids in my family have been in the industry. I was the baby of the family, so I was pretty much born into it. They try to tell me I cut my own umbilical cord, but I don't believe that to be true. But I've been around for a long time. The last 24 years, I've been a coach and a consultant as well um, for salons and spas. And I really am committed to supporting each person and or company and business to really grow their team, to grow their culture, to grow their business and to grow themselves. I've worked with probably over 10,000 hair stylists. I've been in hundreds and hundreds of salons. I've seen y'all's back rooms, enough said. <laughs> and I've been in and out of tons and tons of salons over the years, which has been a blessing because I've been allowed to do amazing classes on business development as well as team building and team development. Um, but this industry was not my dream. I was, like I said, I was born into a th with three out of four kids that eventually got into the dream. It wasn't my intended path. Um, I, my kid, my dream as a child was to play professional baseball. And as a little kid, seven years old, I got into Little League and my best friend was a year older than me. And we both had this amazing little competition going and we were like little good little kids. And then we got to be little good little teenagers. And then we got to be kind of good athletes. And then all of a sudden scouts started coming around and fast forward, long story short, I thought I'd be going pro out of high school, should have studied a little more because ended up going to a junior college instead of a four year. And then I ended up getting drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates while I was there. Um, at the junior college. And I, here I am kind of peeking over the fence at what I think is going to be my dream and I'm going to fulfill it. And they say, if you want to hear God laugh, just tell him your dream. Well, what ended up happening was I tore my rotator cuff right after getting drafted, lost some of my skills, lost some of my speed, lost some of my control, and didn't, didn't give in. I was not a quitter. I spent another 10 years kind of chasing the dream, but I was chasing the dream on the sides, not fully committed. So my brother says he has this great phrase, you cannot expect 100% results with 50% effort. And that's a good little mindset to kind of start with too as well. I know sometimes we think we're going 100%. And if we got real with ourselves, there's always more levels. You can dig deeper. You can dig deeper. We're going to have to dig to depths that nobody's probably been to in our lives throughout this thing. I don't know. We don't know how long it's going to go. <clears throat> so um, I was pursuing the dream. It was starting to not work out. And I was in college as a marketing major. And my dad, who owned the salon and my sister was working with him, started talking about retiring. And my sister didn't want any part of the business. She wanted to get married and, and whatnot. And so... I'm like, you're not going to take over the business. And she's like, I don't want it. I don't want, you know, I don't want these headaches. I don't want these hours. I don't want this life. And what the hell was I thinking? I dropped out of college and three weeks later went to junior or went to cosmetology school. So my dad wouldn't let the, so we wouldn't let the family business go. And so I ended up coming out of school and I was not good <laughs> at first. And it was not easy growing up in a salon and walking around the salon all the time. And you see people like just dropping dues, making people look amazing. I'm like, oh, shit, they can't be that hard. Right. <laughs> Until my hands and fingers and thumbs wouldn't work the way they were supposed to. So I worked at my craft and I worked really, really hard. And eventually I got pretty good and I worked even harder and got a little bit better. So like six months out of school, I entered this competition called Hair Wars. It was in San Diego. I'm six months out of school against the top 50 salons in San Diego. And there's some rock star stylists in San Diego. And uh, long story short, it was like a 15 week competition to get to the finals. And I kept advancing. I ended up taking first runner up out of 50 salons six months out of school, which was really kind of a cool thing. Because as, as you heard my name, I'm Oscar Valencia Jr. So I'm not, I'm not only a son of a hairdresser, I'm a junior <laughs> of a hairdresser. And I probably would have lived in my dad's shadows, which would have been okay as well. But I got to kind of create my own name pretty much out of the block. And he was a pretty proud papa as well. Unfortunately, he passed about a year and a half ago at 90 years old. And it's amazing because he started beauty school at 38 years old. 
and he came out of cosmetology school. Most people come out of cosmetology school blind and don't know what to do yet. And might, they might go assist somewhere. They might go work at a supercuts for speed and technique and confidence. They might roll right into a salon. These days, too, people are coming out and like renting a booth. My dad came out of school and bought a salon at 38 years old, brand new out of the business with this many clients. But he bought an existing little five chair old lady salon and he was Johnny Hustle 24 seven. I mean, he dropped some diamonds on me that first week when I finally got my license. And I thought they were like left hooks at the time, but hindsight is like, they were, they was real. He was keeping it very real. <clears throat> but when you got three kids at home and I'm a newbie, all you can do is hustle. That's all you're gonna know is hustle, hustle, hustle. And that's what he did, but he did it the hard way. And he did it to the point that his body was broken. I can't even tell you the stories of the nights that he literally was crawling out of his car at 10 or 11 at night coming to the front door. And I thought I heard a noise and it was my dad trying to crawl in the front door. For any of you who know what that feels like when your back is gone, that's what his felt like. And he was up at six o'clock in the morning and back out the door the next day. <laughs> so he got this little five chair salon, made it happen. Eventually bought that little five chair salon building. A few years later, he was able to buy the building next door, and he connected these two major buildings, a two-story and a one-story, and leveled this little cottage in the background for parking and made his first full-service mega salon in San Diego. This was before day spas, and this was before everything was in-house. Nails, hair, skin, massage, um, and barbers, we had it all under one roof, and he was just so far ahead of his time. <laughs> and... So I, you know, I was growing up and I was learning my craft and working hard and building business and ups and downs, didn't know what I was doing, did not understand the business. This was just like young 20s, mid 20s and things were like cool. It was a lot of fun. But then I, far, I started understanding, <laughs> Andrew's cracking up over there. <laughs> then I started to learn the business and I started to take it a little bit serious and a lot more serious. And then I got um, connected to a company in San Diego that was doing business education just locally there in San Diego. And I took this course and then fast forward, I ended up working with that company and it was a little San Diego company that I helped them take a national and built it into a multi-million dollar coaching and consulting company um, for about 18 and a half years. And about five years ago, we parted ways and I launched Breaking Down Your Walls, my company, which literally, <laughs> I was not out to build a company. About 13 years ago or so, I had this dream right after I had moved here to Georgia and in my dream, I guess I was thinking about what stops us in life. And in my dream, it was this big blurry object that was off in the distance that kept coming cl clearer and closer. And as it got closer, I could see that it was a wall. And literally in, in my dream, I'm like, oh, that's it. Our walls stop us. If you agree, throw down I agree in the comments, y'all. Our walls stop us. And then it, the, the wall kept moving closer and it got closer and clearer to me. And it said, somebody said word. <laughs> and then I could see that it was a brick wall. And in my dream, these bricks had words on it. Commitment, consistency, action, follow through, love, dedication, understanding. Boom, popcorn going off. It woke me up. I bounced out of bed. I looked at my clock. It was 3.18 on a Tuesday morning. I ran upstairs in my office. I got a big flip chart out, started making all these lines and squares and putting all these words in it. 30 minutes later, I was kind of out of words in my head, but I had a bunch of empty boxes. So I run over to my little library there and start stealing words out of Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins, Ken Blanchard, and just popping words in these boxes that were power words. And then I finished and then I counted them and there were 90. Andrew, Andrew's giving me the silent standing ovation. <laughs> I love it, man. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> And then uh, I didn't know what to do with this. I had this flip chart piece of paper with 90 words on it. A title popped in my mind in that moment, turn your life around 180 degrees in 90 days. But then I, I just didn't know what to do with it. Fast forward, I moved a few months later and unpacked this thing and I taped it to my wall in my office and I had a stare down. Long story short, those words went onto little three by five cards and then they became, I got a graphic artist and they became what you can see behind me in the back. Um, which are 90 bricks that are in the collection. Each one has a word, a definition, and an inspirational quote on the back of each one. Um, that's my what I call my hotel edition. That's the purple edition. I also have what I call the OG, the original red series. And if you can see each one, for those who are on camera, I'm holding it up, it says the word, the definition, and the inspirational quote. So this all literally, like I said, came about from a dream. <coughs> and 
I had that paper, I had these bricks, and I wasn't out to build a company. And one of my mentors, her name is Marsha Weeder. Oprah calls her America's dream coach. And I've taken a class from her before. And she talked about a lot of times when we have a dream, we go into solution mode so quickly that we squelch the dream. So that was always in the back of my head. So I let it kind of organically happen, which is code word for I didn't know what the hell to do next <laughs> in building a company. And then I knew that I had all these years in the salon for 20 plus years, I've been doing coaching and consulting for salons. Watch these people come through a three day business camp where they got proven hardcore systems to increase their business. Owners and some of the staff would go back to their salons. And then I'd roll in three to six months later for an in salon class. And I'm looking at these systems like, where'd they go? These people were taught solid stuff and it's so diluted down now. It's like telephone. You guys play that telephone? Let me give you a little message in your ear and you pass it on. And by the time it gets to the last person, it's like, let's go to lunch. But <laughs> the beginning was not that. <laughs> and so that's almost what happens to systems when they're not maintained. And when somebody doesn't know how to train them and, and to work with the team to hold them accountable to those systems. So now I'm coming in almost from scratch. But after doing that over and over and over for many, many years, I started looking at what's the common denominator of all this. And it turned out to be the team, the personnel. And that was a common goal. And I'm hoping Derek will let me come back in the, as this thing and all of us start to wind down to go back to work. Because I'd love to do a little bit more on team, especially as we re-enter the workforce again. And some people are going to possibly have a whole new teams with new players. And I'd love to be able to integrate everybody and do some things along that way. But getting back to, you know, my story and our thoughts and our beliefs, <clears throat> they're encompassing right now. On a regular basis, our thoughts and our beliefs can control us more than we ever want them to. But it's, um, it's crazy to think that we have the power to control our thoughts and our beliefs because more times than not, I think that many of us are feeling out of control by them. They're running our lives. And so... I've done some research over the years. I've learned a lot from people who have used the bricks. Um, there's hundreds of people all over the country and, and, the, and the world. I got people in Poland with the bricks. It's kind of funny. And I get so much feedback on how they play with them or they use them with their team and what they do with them every day. Um, my ritual every day and many others who kind of follow me or engage with me is many days I go live on Facebook. Many of you have probably seen me. And I'm breaking down my walls every morning, but what I'm really doing is setting my intentions. Most of us go through our day, and I think we're very reactive to our day. 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, oh my God, what a great day. Or holy shit, what the hell happened? What kind of day, and what a crazy day this was, and everything in between. However, imagine if at whatever your early time is, five, six, seven, eight in the morning, that, you know, you get your morning going, have a coffee, kind of do some breath, do your praying, meditation, whatever it is you do. And then it just sort of like running out the door and into the world. What's your intention? To be reactive or to be proactive? To set some intentions and guidelines for yourself so you have an expectation of yourself to achieve some stuff throughout your day. So my ritual is I get up and I flip three bricks. Some people do one, some people do two. I like to flip three words. So it gives me a little broader range of thoughts and beliefs and feelings and emotions. And as I flip these bricks, um, I read the word, I read the definition, I read that inspirational quote and message, and I let it sink in. I be with it for a minute. And I'm like, you know, what, what do I feel from these words? What can I do with these words to create positive actions and outcomes in my day? And then I do what's called ha creating my hashtag power sentence. If you guys were to have look up hashtag power sentence or hashtag the bricks or hashtag breaking down your walls, you'll see all kinds of people that are using the bricks, setting their intentions daily, using their bricks. And it is powerful. This isn't a sales pitch because I could really care less if anybody got the bricks. What I do know is if you do, <laughs> you're going to have some pretty wild moments because there's this running joke like, oh my God, there is no accidents. Watch bricks and words you flip. It's either ones you don't want to see, but absolutely have to see and need to see, or the ones who you're so excited to see because you're running with them and they meant something to you. So in doing those power sentences, I've been able to really control my thoughts and my, my beliefs. And then I create my hashtag power sentence. 
But then I just don't run into my day. I'm revisiting that many times throughout my day to try to stay in integrity to what I said I wanted to achieve. And how many of you are just kind of going through the day? I mean, I, I get it. Busy, children, school, sports. Believe me, I was the jock that mom was running around all over town. I get you moms. I get you dads. <laughs> However, there's a whole lot of other stuff happening in those 24 hours in a day. And it can happen for the good or the bad or the indifferent. And that's my, I hate that word, indifference. It's the least favorite word I can think of sometimes. And I think we could be so much more powerful and so much more engaged and so much more involved. So after all these years of baseball and spending all my time on teams, I guess I've become somewhat of a team building specialist. I've been on tons of teams over my life in many, many sports. I've been the rookie. I've been the veteran. I've been the captain. I've been the newbie. I've been the beginner. I've been the old guy. I've been a coach. I went back and coached my old high school team. But all in all, who I think I am is I am team. I spread that. I try to create that. And I'm kind of a one-man show in the size of my company at the moment, but I have other resources that I work with, aka my team. But I work with teams everywhere. And I try to take ordinary teams and or even good teams, and I turn them into high-performance teams that produce high-end results. <laughs> so... Again, I just want to say welcome and thank you guys for being here. And I want to ask all of you, what are you thinking? <laughs> right now, I want everybody to get a pen and paper out. And I want you to write down two, three, four, maybe five thoughts you're having right now. Go ahead and take a real quick minute while I get a drink of water. Oscar, awesome so far. Um, everybody, uh, please follow Oscar's instructions. Let's get some thoughts out there. So. He can knock down your wall for you. Um, you know, listening to you, Oscar, I have to comment that I love this stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of David Goggins. I don't know if you know who he is. I've heard He's the name. He's a Navy SEAL ultra marathon runner. I'm, he was now I know you're not that. Great, great book, Can't Hurt Me. Um, if any of you want to read a book and you have some time while this is going on, you should read that book because it relates to what Oscar is saying. It really does. You know, some of the things that I've learned and – I carried it through from being in the Marines though, um, is I, um, I, put, I have post-it notes everywhere, right? Yeah. So I put them on my ba bathroom mirror in the morning. These are, my, these are my intentions for the day. These are my bricks for the day, right? Yeah. It, yeah. It's very relatable what you're teaching and I love it. So um, I let, let's get some questions over to Oscar. Well, as you guys are writing those down, you can hit me with some questions in a second, Gary, let me know. Yeah, you know, Oscar, I actually have a question for you, man. I'm, yeah, James. I'm, I'm a font nerd by trade, right? I'm, I, I love graphics. I love the lettering. Um, when you hold up the brick, I don't know, just, it's going to sound odd, but like I said, I'm a font nerd, so you have to understand. Um, what did you, where did you pick that font? Because it just, right away, I was like, man, I'm in. Like, I, right out of oh, the I thought you were about to bust my chops, man. <laughs> no, uh, Actually, uh, my very my, my graphic artist who made my logo, he did my first run, and then after that, my graphic company we played with them and, and changed the font around. Yeah, hey, you're, giving, you're giving me a really good idea, man. So one of the things for you guys is that you know when you have a house with kids, the the kitchen tends to be a hub where you get things done. You know, there's not a lot of other places that they're not infiltrating but everybody loves these stainless steel refrigerators that nothing sticks to. So yeah. I use Expo markers on my fridge. So a lot of times Angela and I, when the kids are finally in different spots, I'm looking <laughs> at your fonts and you're, and I'm like, wait a minute, can I turn the bricks and then write these words on the fridge in the morning and <laughs> really just start the day, man. I, I'm, I'm excited. Well, I got a lot of moms and dads who actually kids. In fact, who was somebody messaged me, send me a picture of three bricks said my daughter flipped these today. This was, yesterday morning and said she wants to start doing this every day. <laughs> She's eight years old. I just thought that was awesome, man. So it's, it's universal for so many people. Yeah. What do you got for me, Derek? Oh, Oscar, yeah. So we got a couple coming in. First one is Isabel. How will this time change me? Let's throw, will, let's put three bricks for her. How will this time change her being on, the phone, being on this call? No, that, I, I think, I think what she means is, what's going on right now in the salon industry with this whole <laughs> Corona thing. Right. So, so let's, let's flip those bricks and, and, you know, let's, let's do it. 
Well, I'm going there, man. So th I think we're all going to be changed out of this thing. I think the cream is going to rise. Unfortunately, I think there's going to be a whole lot of people that are going to walk from the industry. They call me the truth teller, so I'm going to keep it real. And I think we could potentially lose a third of the salons in the country. They're about some number up or down from there, but anything's going to be a disaster. I think to spin that, and I, and I love you all, and I'm sorry that that's going to happen to some people, but I think it's going to really create, a, it's, going to re, it's going to reveal. It's a revealing time. We're all going to be revealed. So you can't hide behind the bullshit no more. And it's going to be time that really the cream's going to rise to the top. I think it's going to be time that people are going to have to take their craft so much more serious. Coming from a background in sports, we practice our asses off every day, 24-7. And I don't find that many in the industry do. There's this the top that do. Um, and now, right now, everybody's got a mannequin and rocking a video. But what were you doing the last 10 and 15 years, you know, in your studies and, and honing your craft? So I'm hoping on the outside of this, we come out of this stronger, better, way more consistent, stronger talent, stronger skills. And it's time to invest heavily in those. But it's not enough to be just technically sound. And that's what my dad and when I first got involved in the business side, there's a lot of talent out there. But unless you have the business acumen together with that, you're not a whole stylist in my world. You can be better. If you want to strive to be the best, you can be average. You know, one of my friends, Susie Trial, alert, she has hashtag alert, um, allergic to average. And I think that's what we all got to start getting down to. So when I was asking you guys to write down some of your thoughts that, that you're thinking right now, how many of you had some negative thoughts? And we'll probably and throw them out there. Out of however many you wrote, one, two, three, four, or five, how many, write down how many negative thoughts you have. Because <laughs> it's pretty interesting how we're wired. We got so one. We, have, we got two. Uh, Oscar, we've got yeah. I'll, I'll read. I'll question you this way. Okay. How do we reopen with a new, more realistic pay structure without losing practitioners? Um, you know that's going to come through all of us, right? But you can Correct. definitely answer that. But one thing I got to relate with what you just said. You know, as a Marine, and I was in Special Forces in the Marine Corps. Um, one of the, our sayings was. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Now Correct. is your proper planning time to prevent your poor performance coming up. Right? Absolutely. And I'm sure that relates to you with the baseball strategies, right? Team, team based. It's, it's team based in the Marines is no different than team based in the sports. Of course, somebody's shooting gotcha. bullets versus throwing balls, but <laughs> it's the same thing. You're a team, is a team, is a team. It doesn't matter if you're a hairdresser, it doesn't matter if you're a Marine, it doesn't matter if you're a baseball player. Yeah, that's what team training is all about. And Oscar is great at it. So well, what's, what's, in, what's so cool about high, high level teams and the mindset of them. So here you go for the Marines and or any service, but especially the Marines, you know, you would take a bullet for your, your co your Marine next to you and vice versa. I mean, I take a bullet on the field. However, I would take a broken leg or a baseball to my head in a game with my team. And that's win, sacrifice. Win. Correct. We, we, we have to have a winner mentality, sacrifice. right? We have to have a winner mentality with salons. If Correct. we're an owner, we have to create a winner mentality with our team. You have to pump them up to feel that they are better than everybody else. Not better than you. You have to be the alpha leader. <laughs> That's a lesson I can teach. And I, and Oscar, I'll tell you this all the time. If you are a leader, no one in your, your group can be better than you at all things. They can be better than you at one thing. This way you can correct them on other things. But that's what a leader is about. Pumping your team up, but also maintaining leadership. I agree. And I would say, you know, the thing about leadership is creating many me's of you and making more leaders. Leaders, you know, yes, leaders have followers, but you don't want followers. You want to create other leaders because then you're able to delegate amongst the company and they're going to have more responsibility. They're going to be able to hand out depending on what size your company is. So let me just give you a few stats about our thoughts and our beliefs. And I apologize. I can dance in some of the business questions, but my purpose tonight is for us to think about what we are thinking about. You're going to get tons of business information over the next several days. I know you think you guys eat, need everything right now. Take a breath. Having the information in the next 30 minutes is not going to change anything that you can't get tomorrow. But what you can change right now is your being, how you are feeling, how you are handling this. And I think that is highly important. So according to the Huffington Post, they say that we have 50 to 70,000 thoughts per day. 
right? <laughs> You're like, where are they all? <laughs> so we have 35 to 48 thoughts per minute. According to Jennifer Reed Hawthorne, 98% of our thoughts we have are the same ones we had yesterday. She also says that 80% of your thoughts are negative ones. So if we have 70,000 thoughts per day, we potentially have 56,000 negative thoughts per day. No wonder we're so jacked up, right? And that's what's going on in our heads and in our minds. So if you guys notice that you had one, two out of three, I saw negative thoughts, many, does this show up for you on a regular? And are you kind of consistently what I call worst first syndrome? I'll say it again. Are you a worst first syndrome kind of person? What that means, something happens and your reaction goes to the farthest possible way it can in the worst possible scenario. <laughs> Not to call anybody so, out. But uh, I Oscar, Oscar like, get, back that up because you said something earlier that relates to that, right? It's being reactive versus proactive. Correct. You have to be proactive. That's proper planning. That's doing these things. That's flipping your bricks. It's getting a proper mindset. Oscar, go go through mindset for if you would for a few minutes. So you keep getting me off my track, brother. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I do I'm just have with the questions mind. that are coming in. I got you. Man, I can answer more of those on the back end, but um, let me just try to get through a little bit of this real quick. So, how do these thoughts and beliefs affect you daily? Because they are affecting you. They're affecting your energy. They're affecting your temper. They're affecting your outlook. I promise you, if you want to know how it's affecting you, ask your kids, ask your significant, and ask your family. They'll tell you. You're a mess. We're a mess right now. Even they probably are to a certain degree in different manners. So how are we controlling that? I'm not saying you're not going to have negative thoughts. You can have, you can have 56,000 of them in a day. However, when you start to hone your craft with mindset, you start to become aware. I know when shit's coming in. Shit in, shit out. However, when it comes in, I can stop it. What do I do? I'll go flip three bits. There's three states of being, mental, physical, and emotional. If you change one, you change them all. And the easiest one to change is physical. So when you're feeling it, the mindset starting to wander, when you're starting to doubt yourself, when you're getting insecure, when you're getting scared, change your state of being. And the easiest thing you do is get off your ass and walk somewhere. Take a few steps, take a 10 minute walk, get away, get some air, do whatever you have to do to create some physical activity. Even flipping bricks is a physical activity. I'm not talking about breaking a sweat. I'm talking about moving and your state changes. And then you can come back, keep processing things out. But as you hone your skill, there's less and less of downhill stuff because you drop and you bring yourself back up and you drop and you bring yourself back up, but you never fall to the bottom because you are on your game. So imagine flipping this. Imagine having 80% positive thoughts in a day. What would your life be like? What would your life be like if you could change that and flip that number and have 80% of your thoughts being positive? It'd be a whole different type of, of day and type of world. So I also want you to take a minute because right now there's so much coming at us, you know, of information and of challenges. I want you to write down what are some of the things that you think are holding you back? You know, is it, for, is it fear? Is it procrastination? Is it money, story, victim, whatever? Write a couple things down. Um, if you wanna throw some of them in the chat, that's great, but you can do this as your own little exercise. <laughs> and as you start to write some of those things down that you think are holding you back, um, you know, it could be money, it could be money for a lot of people right now. Two different contexts, the here and now, but there will be a later and there was a before, and all of those are relatable to how you think. Because if you had a stronger mindset before, a lot of people are going to kind of maneuver through this and navigate in a different way than people who had a bad mindset, because it's even going to drop worse at this time right now. So you are in control of that. You know, they say that disease comes from dis-ease, and we are all in dis-ease right now. And so that's why we got to be very, very careful with ourselves, with our health, but also with our mental health. You know, that's such a huge thing in the world right now. And I'm not saying that we can control a lot of conditions that happen, but we really can work with our thoughts and our beliefs because they're, they're happening all day long. So if you were to talk about and give a word, a title to those things that are holding you back in the comment box, drop down what word you would use to describe those things that are holding you back. 
those things that have you stopped. We got in fear, failure, uncertainty. Get it out, you guys, because this is real time. I love it. Hesitation, finance, some knowledge. Hey, Oscar, a lot of questions. I mean, you're getting hammered with comments on the side. So they just, everybody was saying to update them. So everybody goes to everyone. But a lot of questions about how the stuff you're saying applies to a team. I know there's a lot of salon owners on here that are sort of worried besides all the crazy we're dealing with now. But your team is home, right? So while you're frantically looking at SBA and does my insurance cover anything uh, that we pay for ever, um, you know, what, what are some of the ways that you can use the bricks remotely now? Because you, you and I talked about a couple of good ideas with that. So definitely share that if you can. Awesome. Well, it's interesting because it's, ex it's an exercise. Oh, my God, my phone is blowing up right now. God, get these people out of the biz page. <laughs> um, when I come to do an onsite and I'm doing my two-day team building workshop, one of the things we do early on in day one is I have all the bricks laid out or on a, on a board, depending on the, on the circumstances of the salon I'm at. And everybody in the salon, let's say there's 10, 12 people on the team, each person draws one brick. So theoretically, let's say the owner has a set of bricks and um, everybody tells her to pick, you know, pick one from column A, column B, whatever, and you grab one for each person. And then you give everybody those words. And this is a real, because I do a power sentence for myself, but when I come to salons, we do power paragraphs. And what tends to happen, James, is a really cool experience because you sit back and watch lights go off. Everybody gets their one word and then collectively they put all the words down and everybody's individual word collectively has to produce the sentence and or paragraph. And then on the back end of that, there, it almost becomes like a mini mission statement, not designed as, but most people have, a, you know, a lot of companies have a mission statement and they hire people on and they're like, this is our mission statement. Now live into it. But these people had no part in the creation of it. It's not, they, it's not how they feel. It's not how they are. It's like, here's our business card. It's on it. Be that. Versus when you do an exercise like this, that they get to co-create and be involved in it. My experience, James, is that now there's buy-in. They, you know, they're, they're active. They're in it. They're engaged. They're having fun. They're mixing words around. Oh, let's move these around and see what that sounds like. And it's so cool to watch. And that can be done on a Zoom platform like this, for sure. Did that help answer your question, James? I, I totally dig that. I, I already kind of knew how you were going to answer it. That's why I asked <laughs> it. But, um, but I feel like anybody on here, like how empowering is that, right? We're all struggling to keep in contact with their staff and have good information. And of course, they're home. So they're worried about unemployment and, and all those things. And as owners, we're like, oh, my God, what are we, you know, what is this, you know, $2 trillion and how does it trickle down to us? But I feel like the engagement, man, is so cool. Yeah, it, again, there's gonna, we're going to have answers for all that stuff. And I think um, I like to still have some fun. And in fact, I want to do, I'm going to probably be doing a little call just to have some fun and keep it light as freak, infrequently as we can right now. But if we don't find it and or create it, we are going to stay on negative energy and a negative flow. <clears throat> so it blows me away. I have an old salon client from San Diego. Her name's Darlena Craig. And she hunted me down on Facebook several years ago and she saw the bricks. She's like, oh my God, that's so cool. How do I get them? So she got herself a set of bricks. This woman lives in South Texas um, and she started going, she started posting her little bricks one morning. She took a picture of the three bricks she posted. She made her power sentence and then she does another picture like of a, a, a script of a book she might be reading. Like one was called Vibe. And so she'll put a passage from that. And then she's like doing her workout at 430 in the morning in her home gym every day when she does these posts. As of April 27th, 2019, she was on her 746th day in a row. So where are we at right now? March 30th, 2020. What's that? Another 360, 80 days. So she's well over almost 1,100, 1,200 days in a row of flipping her bricks every single day. This woman has lost 35 pounds. She's running 10Ks and half marathons on a regular basis now. And she's truly one of the happiest, always smiling people that I ever see. And it, it's pretty phenomenal um, what these things can do. It takes her a few minutes in the morning, but it's part of her ritual as well. 
You know, we all have our rituals. We get up, we shave, we brush our teeth, you do whatever, have your coffee. Why are, why are we having a ritual for ourselves? You know, one of the most powerful things one of my old coaches taught me, um, he was a $20,000 a year coach, and he taught me this one thing about called creating a contract with ourselves. So check this out, y'all. We sign contracts with others. We have other signed contracts with us to do business with ourselves. And we enter into contracts for the purpose of, you know, certainty to know what we can count on. It's a, it's a legal binding agreement, all these things. But imagine this, what would your life be like if you signed a contract with yourself and you lived in the world of integrity and in the world of honesty and the world of playing full out. So I'll read my contract with myself, if I may, real quick. This is from my team building workshop that I do. And where'd it go? Oh, shoot. It's actually, I got the wrong book. I apologize. Wrong book. So we'll pass on that for a second. But I took, I took about 20 of the bricks, and that became what gave me impetus to create this cool little contract with myself. And I read it about once every other week now. I used to read it like every day, every other day in the early days. But imagine showing up with a contract with yourself. We would play out differently. How do you feel about that, James or Derek or even Andrew? If you guys had to create a contract with yourself, would you show up differently? And you guys are all playing pretty full out. So absolutely. And uh, this is, uh, I don't know where you learned it from, Oscar, but I actually learned it from one of, one of my mentors also. And uh, I absolutely have a contract with myself. And, you know, every, every day it's, it's getting up to the plate and being better than you were yesterday, right? I feel sad because I see a lot of people in here saying my team is not a team player or my team are not team players. And yeah. um, they're having issues with that. Now is the time when you want to focus. If that's your issue, now's the time when you want to focus. And there's so many things you can do. You can do Oscars program. Team involvement is very important. You got to get them participating as a group. They can't participate as an individuals. They have to participate as a group. So you have to get them in exercises as a group. And remember, you lead by example. If you're not leading as the group leader and participating, they are not going to participate. If you're just pushing them, it's not enough. You've got to make them accountable to themselves, accountable to their teammates. You know, I, I, I teach something called the buddy system. That's a whole different thing. It's what we learned in the Marines. We were actually attached by a rope to yeah. our teammate. And the drill instructors would kick our ass if one of the guys with the rope screwed up, the other one would pay the punishment. Now, that's a different type of system, but it relates to this. You've got to put peer pressure, peer, peer pressure on them and have them <laughs> participate. You can't do it as your own. If you constantly put um, pressure on them, they're going to revolt against you as a team. Okay? You've got to have them put pressure against each other. Oscar's system is perfect for this. You know, it's no, Oscar. It's how you show. It's how you show up every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How you you really honed in on it? How you prepare for the day? How you frame the day? How you frame your people? Your mindset? What you believe about them? Who yeah. they are? And who you are in relationship to them? Correct. And this is not this is not an easy road. If anyone no. thinks that this is easy and you just wave a magic wand, doesn't happen. There's Correct. a lot of work that we have to do, and we cannot. We can only change ourselves. We Correct. cannot change anyone else. Yeah. When, we, when we get that, that's the first step to the change that we're really looking for in the entire uh, salon or environment that we affect. Absolutely. You know, this is a great time to bring everybody together. If you want to create some little work team building exercise, is bring all your team together on a Zoom call and say, let's reinvent ourselves, and what would that look like? And just do what I call dumping, have maybe the owner with a flip chart, and there's no wrong ideas, as James was saying last night, you can't be poo-pooing on ideas, because hidden in one of those is the next big pet rock. <laughs> and I think it's important to get everybody involved and let them start to say what that might look like, how we might greet the guests differently, the little things we can do differently, what are the little extras coming out of this that are going to have people talk about us? You know, there's one of my favorite books. It's called Word of Mouth Networking. And they talk about the five T's of marketing. 
And one of them is to find your talkers, give them topics to talk about, take part, track, um, and I forget the fifth key. <laughs> but it's um, it's getting people to talk about you and giving them a reason to talk. Oh, topics, topics was the fifth one. Give them topics to talk about. Um, you know, it's raining, and one of my one of my dear friends, Tracy Robinson, she she was one of my guest speakers in one of my call series, and she'd go to the um, dollar store and get a bunch of dollar umbrellas. And when it's raining at her salon, she tells the guest, take an umbrella and just bring it back on your next appointment. And so that was that little extra. So the guests had an umbrella to walk out to their car. And or if you or somebody else has time, walk them out. It's all the little things now. It's going to be nuance that's going to set you apart from the people down the street. And those people down the street may not be down the street anymore. Yeah. And that's, that's the reality. Hey, Oscar, uh, Mary Wilson is in the Facebook group. And she actually brought up a good point that I think plays into what you're saying. She said, we're all exactly in the same place right now. You know, obviously yeah. be grateful that you're healthy and you're alive and hopefully everybody is healthy and, and well, but it, you're sort of, you're sort of leveling the playing field. So, you know, everybody seems to be having a lot of issues with communicating with their team, but not just because they're isolated now, right? Now yeah. it just makes it harder, but guess what? When they were in the salon with you, they were probably just as isolated as they are right that's, now. That's the revealing I'm talking about. What people are going to actually come to grips with is like, maybe I don't have my ideal team right now. And you probably know it deep down. And it doesn't mean every single person. But, you know, coming from a sports background, you don't fit on a team or you don't produce at a certain level. Guess what? You get cut or you get traded. <laughs> Sometimes I wish there was a draft for hairdressers and spa techs. And that we can all like, because tell you. And I, Dude, you, you just started something. You got you have like eight to 12 weeks to get that all sorted out, man. We could do like fantasy, <laughs> like fantasy hairstylist football. And, and but, but here's the thing. Yeah. Hey, like not even to be too jokingly because there's serious parts in there, James, you know, imagine some people that don't fit at salon X, Y, Z, you're not a bad person or a bad stylist. Mostly, hopefully not. You're not a good fit sometimes and, or they are not with you, but you may go down the street to another place and boom, all of a sudden that's your drive. That's your vibe. And that's your home. And sometimes we also force ourselves as stylists to work somewhere that we're not completely happy. Sometimes owners, we hold on to people way too long because we're constantly running scared. You know, we run scared of losing people. We run scared of having to get new people. We know how hard it is to recruit. <laughs> and I think things are going to be a, seriously changing. I think we're all going to have a new gratitude for what we do. I think we're going to find even more passion for what we do. You guys, my dad told me, I told you, he dropped some diamonds. One of the first things he said to me, check this out. First week, I got my license. I'm Mr. Hip, happening dude, right? I roll in and he says, son, you are now in the service business. And if you're not there to serve your guests, somebody else will be. And he goes, and guess what, kid? I'm right here. He goes, I will snatch a client out from under your feet so quick you won't know what happened to you if you do not serve your guest. You are a servant in this business. And I don't mean that in a different context. We are here to serve. What the frick happened to our servant's heart in this industry? If we can get back to that and show some love, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop an F-bomb right now, fuck the attitudes, you guys. Get back to getting real, to getting appreciative. You are not too good. There is always somebody behind you that's gonna be better. Get a little bit more humble and get a little bit more in love with your clients, with your profession, and you'll fall in love with yourself again. And that's the passion that we can have. I'm loving the, the silent standing ovations. <laughs> that's, what we be, that's what we do in my call series. <clears throat> but um, I'm just excited, and as you might tell, that we can spin this mentally. You're going to have answers. They're going to be coming. Just breathe every day and process the information you get every day. I don't mean to slight anything or anybody, but all of a sudden, everybody's a coach. Be careful the information you get. Be careful where it comes from. Derek, Derek's cracking up over there. You know, granted, you know, you tend to get what you pay for, and this series is free, but you're getting it from a lot of seriously qualified people who've been doing this 20, 30 years and have been around a minute and understand the ups and downs and the flows of the business and of people. So I've been honored to be a part of this. I could keep going. I have a little wrap up when, we, when we're ready to uh, wind down, Gary. Um, do we have more questions or comments that I can support anybody with? 
Yeah, there's a there was a few. Let me just look. Um, I mean, obviously, Oscar at the end uh, <laughs> mentioned where people can get the bricks and about your website. Um, there was a great comment. Um, you know, Brandy Robinson was saying that she's been in the industry for 20 years. They took over a renting salon. They also have commission. They'll power through it. But what main focus would you recommend that they stress to their staff to keep them at ease? Um, but what's you know what do they need to start doing while they're on this off time? Some of I don't I don't have the magic sauce to give that answer. To be perfectly honest, you uh, for for days and moments we're going to have to be somewhat comfortable with being uncomfortable. We're going to have to seek the exact information we need. Information's leaking down slowly and in bits and pieces, and then half of that sometimes is not completely accurate. So keep digging, do your due diligence. I mean, this is an opportunity time to really dive in and read and read these bills and talk to your accountants, talk to your attorneys and really get solid information on what applies to you because state to state, it flows differently as well. And keep them breathing, keep them engaged. Let them know you love them. Let them know that we'll figure this out. I know, you know, they don't have the answers. You don't have the answers, all of them. But ask them, what are you doing? Because some of them are curled up in a corner watching Netflix for 20 hours. What are you doing to get yourself out of this? Because there's funk going on out there. And it's everywhere. How are you getting out of the funk? And they have to create different things to create energy, to create um, perspective, to create ideas. And that's where y'all can come together. I think if you re-engage everybody, like, ask them. We don't give them a date when we come back, but when we come back, how do we want to come back? What do we want to look like? Do we want to dress differently? Do we want to elevate our game? Do we want to elevate the experience for the guests? And do the work now so that you stand apart later. And this is an opportunity to shine on the back end of that. Now, having said that, I get it. All of our pockets are thin right now. And that's the dominating, that's the dominating emotion and fear. It's gonna be there in 20 minutes. It's gonna be there in three hours. Do some stuff in between to manage your thoughts, your beliefs, your mind, and your body. Hey, before you get into your rap, man, somebody asked you to pick three cards. I would say, hey, three might be a lot at the tail end, but you gotta pick a card, man. Pick any card, you know, shuffle them out. You my, pull my, one out. My, check this out. So this was a working deck I had in one of my briefcases. And it, I counted them earlier, so God knows what happened to five of them. So there's only 85 in here. And I'm not going to pick three. I'm going to pick 85. And I'm going to riff. God knows what this is going to sound like, y'all. But I'm literally going to go through every brick and try to connect it in some sort of phrase and sentence and paragraph and create some inspiration, some hope. But I want you guys to kind of just be with these words and however they come out when I start to phrase this thing, but to think about how powerful words are. Because ultimately these words that are on these bricks were just a thought before I put them onto a piece of paper. The thought popped in my mind, the word popped in my mind, the word went onto paper, and now it lives in an actual product that I call the bricks. So it's pretty crazy that when I open my, my little bag, this is what they come in when people receive them. I have different color bags, but the top word looking at me was relentless. And so, <laughs> deep breath, Oscar, here we go. Let me take a quick drink of water. All right, you guys, this is from the heart. I don't know what's gonna come, but I'm gonna have to try to look at these and flip them at the same time. Okay, so we must be relentless in our pride and in our faith so that we can continue to be unstoppable. We must have amazing follow through to create quality experience and have responsibilities to our guests and to ourselves. Get excited because you are worthy and we must have perspective in, in order to maintain our energy in our goals. Find someone to keep you accountable because you are a leader. Create more joy and more fun and more integrity in your planning. This may get uncomfortable, but you are a visionary to the business and to your team. 
Let them find peace. We are limitless in our actions and our communications to combat fear. Be grateful, be proactive, be disciplined in your strategic planning. It's all about empowerment and love and having a servant's heart right now. You are magnetic. You are daring, you are vocal, and you are optimistic. Be persistent. Set your boundaries, honor them, and be more powerful than you've ever been in your life so you can be relaxed and rest well at night. You have more strength than you could possibly imagine. Stay positive, create clarity for yourself and for your team so they can be productive and find hope. We are the most friendly industry in the world, which creates successful people with high self-respect. It is time for us to look at what we need to change who we need to be and what we can do for the future of our industry. But stay humble. Quit procrastinating so that you can receive the truth. But in order to do so, you must be open-minded. You must have motivation and you must be intentional. Now of all times, it's time to be more involved in your company and your business. Have the foresight to be wise. Be more consistent and increase your commitment to be healthy, which will require execution to completion. We must have way more understanding, but don't lose the opportunity to be spontaneous. Self-doubt will creep in. However, if you continue to be dynamic and you decide that it will not rule you because you are qualified, oh, this is a tough one. <laughs> you are qualified, which sometimes requires forgiveness of yourself and others in these times. Continue to be passionate. Dig deeper to find more passion so you can be even more dependable and encouraging to yourself, your family, and your team. This is mandatory. We must be prepared and focused and generous of ourselves and our times to increase our self-confidence and create the world and the life that we want to live and breathe and live in. This will create more momentum. And at the end, you will be happy. There's my 85 words. <laughs> that was a workout. <laughs> I had no idea what that was going to sound like, but you try and put it together, you know, something th like that. At I thought it was going to be like a rap. I was like, I was getting ready, man. I was like, well, gonna, you know. that's, that's one of my little undercover dreams is I want to get Pitbull to do a rap with 90 words. <laughs> <laughs> so that was awesome. You guys, you all are amazing. You all have everything you need within you right now to achieve what you want to achieve. Dig deeper find a new possibility, create a new outcome, look for being bigger and better and change your mind, change your thoughts, change your beliefs, and you will change your world. Oscar, you are awesome, empowering, and very exciting. I appreciate you being on tonight. <laughs> I really do, brother. It's been my pleasure. Uh, I, I love this industry, you know, kind of going back to what I had said growing up in this industry and watching my dad do it the hard way. And I, I promise not to try to get emotional right now, but that I think that was my motivation for getting into the coaching side of things. As an athlete, we have this saying as punk kids, those that can do and those that can't coach. So I fought coaching for 12 years when people were coming after me to be a coach. I'm like, screw that. I can still do it, man. <laughs> and then when I really understood what coaching meant in this context and in this world, I, I jumped full speed because if I can help one stylist, one salon do it in a better, more efficient way than my dad did it with all the hard knocks, then I can rest well when this is all said and done. 
My dad started at 38 years old and he was on the beach in Mexico, retired at 62, liquid millionaire. He's one of only five salon industry people that I know that have retired liquid millionaire. And it can be done. It took him buying a building to do so. And that was how he retired down there. But he was an insane example of hard work. In fact, I thought his world for the longest time because I didn't want my life to look like 14, 15 hour days, six days a week. So I was pacing myself for a long time, being really cool, not having any business nor money, but I had lots of time. And then when I woke up one day, I was crazy busy, just like him, but I still wasn't doing it efficiently and effectively. I was doing it, I had busyness, not a rocking business. Huge distinction. You could have busyness 14 hours a day and be broke. And I was until I understood what it take and who I had to see and what combinations of clients and how to book them in a particular manner that allowed me to create the success that I wanted and dreamed of at the time. And then my body broke down from all my years in baseball and the signs were on the wall good 15 years ago that I know I'm not gonna be able to do this for long. My, my left shoulder was torn from baseball and I got aches and breaks and everything else on my body that takes its toll. You all that do hair, you all that are skincare, nail techs, massage, you work fucking hard and I get it. I, I wish somebody told me this in cosmetology school and this is what I say in all my classes all over the country and wherever I speak. It's not if, it's when your body will break down. Where's that at? Where's that, you know, freaking ad in the cosmetology books? They don't tell you that. It's not if, it's when your body's gonna break down to some degree. Now there's a percentage who are just rock stars and never do. However, lots of us are broken and hurting. So if you don't get yourself involved with support and coaching and understanding the numbers and the business side of things, you're, this is where it's gonna level you out because some people will not come back because A, they didn't pursue the education or they don't want to now. Another thing my dad told me that first week on the floor, son, the day you think you know it all in this business is the day you better get out. He goes, this is an ever changing business and you gotta be on top of the game all the time with what's going on. It's like the fashion world that's changing three and four times a year. You get on your game or it's gonna get you out. And then fast forward several years later, he comes to me, he goes, I'm done, I'm quitting, I'm walking. He goes, but it's not because I think I know it all. I'm just not willing to learn anymore. And I was like, shoot, you cannot go out any bigger than that. And you're walking with your pride and your talent on your terms. And that's powerful. So you all have to seek out the information and education that you don't have. Here's some downtime. Besides all the things you have to take care of to manage your life and your loans and the world, what else can you do right now to improve yourself, to improve your skills, to improve your thoughts and your beliefs, to improve your color, to improve your cutting, to improve your business acumen, to learn the numbers and understand the numbers. Reach out to me, reach out to any of these coaches that are going to be on this series and don't let yourself fall because many of us are here to pick you up, but if you don't reach your hand back out to us, we may not see that you need the help. Amen. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, obviously, you did an awesome job. You really got us all pumped up tonight. I, lo I love the bricks. Love how you wrap how you wrapped through that Oscar. It killed me. I mean, that that was quick, dude. That was quick. You, that was a workout, you were, man. <laughs> I wouldn't say rap, but you remember REM used to have that song where they would go through all the words, right? Now I'm going a little bit back, but there it was, right? So, that awesome. uh, yeah, that, that, that was awesome. Um, but, you know, all of you, remember what Oscar said, right? You, you, you need intention, but intention is great. But without action, it's nothing. Take action, folks. Take action. You know, get involved with Oscar. Get involved with the other coaches. All this free information is here for you. Um, just awesome tonight, Oscar. And so they get a link to the website if they want to explore or whatever. Is that correct through you or? Yeah, so so if any of you want to follow Oscar's link, you can go on to his coaches on our classes panel. There's a link to his website and everything there. Oscar, you can also give it out right now. Just just tell them. www.breakingdownyourwalls.com. 
There and it has, all, it has all my products and my services, et cetera, there. But this isn't a pitch for that. But if you want help, do not stay alone right now. Right now, if you want to be alone, it's up to you. Because there's a whole lot of out there people that are willing to put it out there on the line. Yeah, one thing I will say is, and you'll notice that this throughout this whole series, all of the coaches here have their own coaches. So oh, yeah. if that's not important to you, you should really think about that. When we're and, talking and as coaches, one, and more than right? one for different categories. Exactly. We've all been mentored by somebody else. So yeah. it's super duper important. It, it really is. It really, really is. Um, I don't I care if you're a paid coach, not a paid coach, but just have somebody that your ideas can be bounced off of and not a schmuck. You know, make sure it's somebody that actually walked the walk and talked the talk. And, and even at a minimum, if you can't find that person or don't know where to look, find a colleague that you can create, quote unquote, accountability partners. You tell them what you want them to hold you accountable for and what you want that to look like and vice versa for them. And you'd be surprised what you can achieve just with a friend and some accountability. Because most of us don't want to let somebody down, especially ourselves. Hey, hey Oscar, like before, you, earlier, right? before you wrap. Pressure. Yeah. Before you wrap, someone had asked, can you just tell us quickly your contract to yourself? <laughs> I don't know it by heart. <laughs> um, just, just give us the, the rapper version. <laughs> can I, you know what? Can I minimize this? And are you guys still seeing me? Uh, yeah, we can see you. Okay, let me pull up a PowerPoint here real quick that um, I have it in. Forgive me, guys. I will give you a cool one here if I got it. You know what? It's not going to happen. Um, I will post it. <laughs> Can I post it in the group later? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. I apologize, you guys. And I, you know what? You guys just caught me. Here's my commitment to all of you. I'll know it by heart. Bye. <laughs> Can I let you know the date later when I'll know it by heart? See, this is what accountability looks like, you guys. This is accountability. And watch yourself when you get on that road because you're going to say stupid shit like I just did. And now you got to live up to it. So. I will own my contract with myself in the next week. Bam. <laughs> awesome. And hopefully it inspires you guys to uh, be able to create your own. James, you have any other uh, questions from the Facebook group or from the live? No, I mean, tons of comments, Oscar. Everybody agreeing with what they're, you know, uh, like you said, a lot of people nervous and scared and things, but um, as you got through a lot more empowerment, which is just killer. Um, really excited for our staff and, and, you know, for us to use the bricks too. I think it's a great way to get everybody united and that's what we need right now. Amen to that. It, it, it's a fun tool. It's a, it's, it saves me, you know, and what's crazy is here I am. I created it. I'm human. I'll be transparent. There are days and many days. Sometimes I don't do them and I look at the results and my brother has another saying, or I, I have a saying, he has another saying. One of my sayings is your results are in direct proportion to your efforts. So I always say that. And I've noticed that when I'm not doing that little activity, I have variance in my results. Here's another thing my brother says. He was also a stylist as well. And he was a Marine, Derek. <laughs> my, dad, my dad went from milkman to the salon industry. So I am the true milkman son. My brother went from the Marines to hairdressing, and I went from the Pittsburgh Pirates to hairdressing. All natural transitions, of course, right? But my brother <laughs> says, <laughs> my brother says, it's okay to be a victim, but set your alarm clock, and when the buzzard goes off, get back to your life. We're all going to be a victim for a little bit. Monitor how long you're going to choose to be down. But be in the pain, acknowledge it, it's real, it sucks, and then what are you going to do? And I'll leave you with this final thought. Do you all know what the enemy of fear is? Action. Action is the enemy of fear. Find something to do and do it every single time the fear kicks in. God bless you all. I wish you the best. We're here for you. Let us know how we can help. Don't go at it alone. And you all stay safe and stay healthy. God bless. Thanks for your time tonight, Oscar. Awesome. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. Can't wait to be on every night and see who else. We got Philip and 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 Mary tomorrow night, I believe. Correct? Yeah, I believe that's the lineup. Philip and Mary Wilson tomorrow yes. night. Yes. Uh, 
You guys got to pick up where I left off. You hear that, Mary and Philip? <laughs> <laughs> oh, throwing down the challenge. <laughs> hey, I, I had to follow James, so now they better bring it. <laughs> there you go. All right, thank brother. You, thanks for bringing Eric, it tonight. Thank you, James. Thank you, Andrew. And thank all of you. Go get them. Keep breaking down your walls. <laughs> Thanks to our attendees tonight. Just remember, it's every night at 8 o'clock. You will get a new link um, by email. Um, some of you said you didn't receive it, but make sure you check your spam. Sometimes, obviously, depending on your email provider, it goes to spam. If not, I'm going to start posting them in the Salon Owner Mastermind group so that you can find them in the group. Thanks, Oscar. Great evening. Thanks, uh, Andrew <laughs> and uh, James, for helping out tonight. And uh, good night, everybody. Peace. Better, James. Peace.